This tutorial will describe the general usage of the submarine sonar stations. It will briefly describe all sonar stations on the subs and how to successfully operate those stations in conjunction with the nav map screen. For detailed information on the sub sonars and all other components of the game, we encourage you to consult the manual. The narrowband display is a good display to start a sonar search because the narrowband display will normally have the first indication of a sonar contact. The narrowband display will present the discrete tonals, individual frequency signals that submarines, surface ships, and torpedoes will radiate through the water. Lower frequency signals are subject to less signal loss, called propagation loss, than higher frequency signals. Therefore, look for the initial detection on the sensor that covers the lower frequencies. For all the subs except the kilo, that's the tow array sonar. The window at the top of the display is the broadband search window and displays true bearing. The baffled area, 30 degrees either side of own ship heading, is the area where own ship masks contact signals. Sweep the cursor across the search window and look for the narrowband signals that will appear in the middle narrowband display window. Strong signals in the search window will stand out visibly from the background noise. The towed array presents two bearing signals for each contact, the true bearing and an ambiguous bearing. A course change can be made to resolve this bearing ambiguity. The bearing to the real contact will remain relatively unchanged, while the bearing to the ambiguous contact will shift by the amount of the course change. The towed array sonar is streamed far behind own ship, so it will take a few minutes before the towed array completes the course change. In this case, the contact bearing is real and the other contact is ambiguous. The display signature button turns on a database of narrowband signatures in the lower profile window. Page through the database to find a matching profile to help classify the contact. In this case, the contact signature profile appears to match the stored profile of an Oscar class SSGN. Let's mark one of the frequency lines and assign a sonar tracker to the signal. The sonar will then automatically follow the contact signal and periodically report the contact information to the TMA display. The TMA process is discussed in a separate TMA tutorial. Now that the contact has been classified, the USNI browser can be used to find information on the contact, including the contact's TPK value, turns per knot. The daemon display can now be used to estimate the contact's speed. This is an important clue to use while conducting TMA. The daemon display requires a broadband signal, so we'll go to the broadband display to mark the contact, then go to the daemon display. With the cursor placed on the lowest frequency octave and using the TPK value from the USNI browser, a speed estimate can be made. Although seldom used because they reveal the presence of the submarine, Submarines do have active sonars. The high frequency sonar is used for ice and mine detection. The medium frequency setting is used for a general active search. Set the range scale and transmit type and you're ready to transmit. Place the cursor on a detected contact and marking the contact will display this bearing and range information on the nav plot and the TMA plot. A single ping, although possibly revealing your presence, can be used to help sort out a confusing passive-only contact picture. The active intercept display can be used to detect other platforms that are transmitting on their active sonars, including active sono buoys. This concludes our sub-sonar tutorial. Please consult the manual for a more detailed description of how to use the sub-sonar stations and tactics to employ those stations successfully in this game.